Hey guys, welcome to Stopbox. In this video, we'll create a Google Share Drive and show you how to use it as a server. This only works if you have a Google Workspace Business Standard. If you have Business Starter, you'll need to upgrade your subscription to Standard. Then go to drive.google.com. You'll see My Drive and Share Drive. Click Share Drive, then click New, then name your Share Drive. If nothing happens when you click Share Drive, that means your Google Workspace admin doesn't allow you to create a Share Drive and that they may have to create it for you. Once you've created your Google Share Drive, you can right-click here, create new folder, or add your files. If you created multiple Share Drives, click the Share Drives over here, then you'll see all the Share Drives under your domain. If you right-click on a Share Drive, you'll see some options that you can configure. First one is Manage Members. This is where you can add access to a specific person or groups. I'm going to add access to John Smith user. And over here, you'll see their access. You can set them as manager, which they can edit and delete contents, share or revoke access to others, as well as modify the share drive settings. You can set it as content manager, which is the default setting that it picks. This permission can edit and delete files and sometimes share content. You can pick contributor, which can only add and edit files, a commenter, which can only comment on a file, and a read-only viewer. You can also add a message over here, since you have an option to notify the person you're giving access to. If you don't want them to get an email, just uncheck this notify people, and then this button would say share as opposed to send. You can also add a group instead of adding one person, just like how I showed it on my previous video. I've linked that video over here. There's a marketing group that I created, which you can add that group to a share drive. You can also notify that group or uncheck it so you're not spamming their inbox. One thing I forgot to mention, if you set someone as a manager, they will receive notification when someone requests access to a specific file or folder. If you want to modify an access to a specific person or group, right click it and go back to manage members, change the access over here, or remove them completely. If you modify their access or remove them, they will not get an email notification that their access has changed. If you want to make an announcement to the people that has access to a specific share drive, right click and select email members, and you'll see all the members that will receive a message. You can also not include the content managers, send yourself a copy, you can modify the subject, add your message, and then send. I'm not gonna do that over here, so I'm gonna cancel that. Another way of modifying the settings is by clicking these three dots. Now as a manager of a shared drive, you have a little bit of control with your access and roles. You can do that by selecting shared drive settings. And you'll see there are a few options that you can modify. You can allow outside people to access your shared drive. This will be good if you have temporary workers who will be working on that shared drive. I'll disable that for now. You can also allow anyone to access your files. As long as they have a link, they should be able to view your files. Be careful with the setting, especially if it's an internal only shared server, you don't want to turn this on. For role permissions, you can also allow content managers to share folders. This will allow content managers to only share specific folders without sharing the whole drive. And the last setting is allowing viewers and commenters to download, print, and copy your files. I think the best way to incorporate those settings is by creating proper naming conventions. For example, if it's an internal only share drive, put internal as a prefix for that share drive. If it's confidential, I suggest you put confidential and then a brief description of that folder. Then set the access to be more strict so no one can accidentally share files to people. If you're creating a shared drive with external access and you like to live dangerously, Danger is my middle name. Put external as a prefix for that drive and then check everything under shared settings. I'll go through examples of these settings later on. Another setting that we can change is changing a theme. As you can see, we have this green picture over here. So if you go to the settings, then change theme, pick from the gallery or create a custom theme. You can just pick from the gallery. Pick from one of the available pictures, select it, refresh the page. Probably not the most exciting settings that you'd bother changing. 
Speaking of changing, this URL over here is the permanent web address for this shared drive. So if you or someone renames your shared drive, that URL will not change. If someone makes a shared drive with the same name, which is possible on the Google shared drive, that URL is your main reference. If you have multiple drives and you want to find a file in a specific drive, click the settings menu, then select search within that specific drive. Enter what you're looking for in the search bar, and then it will only give you results inside that specific shared drive. If you want to hide a shared drive, there's an option over here. This only hides it from your view. Other users that have access to this drive will still see it in their list of shared drives. If you want to see your hidden drives, click this hidden shared drive and you'll see all the hidden drives. The hidden drive button would not appear if you don't have any hidden ones. Instead of hiding drives and you want to delete them instead, you can right click and there's an option to delete the shared drive. If there are contents on that drive, you cannot delete them and it's actually grayed out. I have this drive that's empty. As you can see, delete shared drive is an option over here. Only managers of that shared drive can delete that drive. For moving files from one shared drive to another, open the source drive, select a drive or file, right click on it and select move. You'll see all your drives, then select the drive where you want to move it. Only managers of a source drive can move folder or file. Keep in mind that it will inherit the permission of the new drive. So some people will lose access if they don't have permission to view that new drive. If this video is helpful so far, please do me a favor and click the like button. Now let's go through the shared drive settings and show you how the settings affect your drive. On this drive, all the drive settings are on. Even content managers can share folders of this drive. Now I have a file here that I've already shared to someone. To view whom it was shared to, right click and click share. You'll see the all tab, which shows you all the people that has access to the share drive. You'll see the guest tab. This is where you'll find the people who are not drive members, but has access to that file. Under general access, that's currently unrestricted. This means that you have to explicitly share the file to a person or a group. You can switch that to your whole domain, which means that only people in your company domain can access the files. You can change that to anyone with a link, which anyone in the internet that has a link can access the file, even though they are not members of this shared drive. And there's another setting over here. If you click the cog wheel, viewers and commenters can download, copy, and print this file. Consider turning this option if you don't want viewers to do those. If we go back to the main shared folder and look at the members, there are no indication that something was shared to a guest. Now I find this to be a problem because if you have multi-level folders, you don't know if any of your files were shared to someone. To clean the permission, I won't allow people who aren't shared drive members to access files. This way, I can guarantee that no matter where I look on this shared drive, the members are the same. And since we've done that, let's look at the members again on this file. As you can see, it will give you an error and the guest will immediately lose access to this file. You'll also notice that the general access cannot be modified and stays unrestricted. If you find that that setting is too strict and you want to modify this so internal staff can easily access files within a shared drive, go to the shared drive settings and check allow people outside, but check allow people who aren't shared drive members to access files. Then right click on the file again and click share. So Stopbox01 still doesn't have access to this file. Under general access, you wanna change this to your organization. This way you can just click copy link and then share that link to your internal staff. You can also look at these settings so it's not too strict for your company. In terms of drive capacity, this will always depend on how many users you have. Currently, I only have four terabytes only because I only have two users on this account and Google Business Standard only gives you two terabyte per user. You might wonder why create a shared drive and pay Google Business Standard when I can share a folder within my drive. 
On my drive, I have a project folder that I've shared with a few users. If we look inside this folder, I don't own all the files in here. A few problems that may come up in the future is sharing control. If another user owns a file in it, they can easily add anyone to collaborate on a file, even if you don't want them to. I'll show you another example. I'll log into my John Smith account. Let's say you have a template that you want your collaborators to copy and edit. This could be a presentation, a letterhead, or some Google Sheet budget tracker. If they duplicate your file, they are the owner of that file. You may be able to view it, but they can't control your access. And because someone else owns the file, they can easily remove your access. You can transfer ownership to another person within a company, but if an owner of a file is an external user, Google won't allow you to transfer it. As an example, I have a file that's from my personal Gmail. I want to transfer ownership, and I'd get this error. Let's say you do find a way to transfer ownership, but that's an extra step that you have to remember. And if you're dealing with a lot of files, people will forget. If you start using the share drive, the drive owns all the files. You can set the drive permission and you can limit who will have high level permission. If someone duplicates a file, that's automatically added in that share drive. The permission of that file will be the same as the share drive permission. You don't need to transfer ownership even if the employee leaves or an external person created a file in your shared drive. If you decided to use a shared drive and want to transfer a folder from your My Drive, go to the folder or file, right click, select Move To, look for the shared drive, then click Move. It will scan your folder if you can move it. If you're not the owner of the file, you will run into some issues. Download that report, and you'll see which file is giving you an issue. In this case, it looks like the file on my personal Gmail is the one that cannot be moved because my personal Gmail owns it. To fix this issue, you'll need to make the external user a contact manager, then they can move that for you. One advantage of my drive that is not on the share drive is the file expiration. You can right click a file or folder. When you click Share, select the uh, permission of that user, and you'll see that you can add an expiration date. You can even modify it to expire in a specific time. Definitely one of the features that should be added under the Share Drive. In terms of access type, there are three access types under the My Drive. You have Editor, Commenter, and Viewer. And as I showed you earlier, on the share drive, you have five different access. With our current setup, everyone can make a Google share drive. So if I go to John Smith, I can click new drive here and he can also create one. If you leave this open for everyone to be able to create a share drive, it can get messy and out of control. So I suggest you lock them up. To do that, Let's go to our admin console. You can click the admin console over here or go to admin.google.com. On the left side, you'll see apps. Click Google Workspace. And then click Drive and Docs. This will load Google Drive settings. And then you'll see Sharing Settings. Click the drop down. And then look for Share Drive Creation. Click the pencil to edit the settings. Then uncheck Prevent Users from Creating a New Shared Drive. Scroll down and then click Save. There are a few default settings here that you can edit when creating a shared drive, but I won't go through it on this video. If you want me to go through the shared drive settings more, please make sure you click Like, and if I get enough likes, that means there's interest there and I'll create a video and go through the whole Google Drive admin console. Now to see all the shared drives on your domain, scroll down and you'll see Manage Shared Drive. And it will give you the list of all the shared drive that was created. If you hover over a shared drive, it will give you Manage Members, Settings, and more. If you click Manage Members, it will show you all the drive members and you can add users there too.
You can also change the permission for each specific member. You'll also see the cogwheel, which will give you the shared drive settings. And as an admin of your organization, there's an additional setting that disallow or allow managers to modify the shared drive settings. You don't necessarily need to be a member of that shared drive to manage the members or change any settings. Another thing you'll notice is the status of the shared drive. It will show you active and deleted. If you want to restore a shared drive that was deleted, click more and click restore. Another useful information that you'll see here is the storage use. This is useful if you want to figure out which drive is consuming the most of your storage. If you scroll all the way on the right, you'll see all the shared drive ID. It will also show you the item capacity. So even though you have a two terabyte limit on the whole drive, you have a 400,000 files and folders limit. And the last thing is the storage limit. Currently, each drive has an unlimited storage. One feature that I think is missing here is creating a shared drive. As an admin, if you want to create a shared drive, you still need to go to drive.google.com and create a shared drive there. I know there's quite a bit of information here and I've only talked about a few settings on the admin console, but I hope you learned something new. And if you did, thank me in the comment below. See you in the next video.